so arindam we are live okay great yeah huh? and uh, so before yeah. we actually start discussion with other people uh, i will uh, introduce arindam and then we can actually get into discussions okay if you want to join us for asking questions you can use this link uh, which i am i will be copy pasting uh, in the chat section and then so first good evening friends thanks for joining sincerely appreciate today we have with us dr arindam lahari arindam is ceo of automotive sector skill council so he actually knows automobile sector or automotive sector in and out and that is the reason i actually requested him to uh, join our discussion today and if required we will focus our discussion on uh, completely uh, on uh, what we can say uh, automotive sector but uh, uh, as we also have venki who is my other panelist uh, so we if if you have any questions for venki also because venki is from persistent systems uh, and uh, he has spent his life in it sector so to we have to now uh, diggaj you know biggies one from automobile sector one from it sector so i hope today's discussion will be a very interesting discussion so let's jump into the discussion so arindam over to you i would like you to talk about yourself first and then i would request you to actually give a short summary maybe 3 4 minutes or 5 minutes about where the automobile sector is currently moving and how you think that this sector offers real good opportunities you know to our youngsters so that i can actually uh, crop that clip subsequently after our discussion and play it uh, as an independent clip on my channel great so over great. to you arindam <clears throat> thank you thank you and uh, thank you dr jere for inviting me to be part of this great initiative and uh, good evening venki uh, glad to meet you online Uh, Likewise, uh, my uh, very quick uh, background. Uh, I did my mechanical engineering from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Uh, always wanted to be in the domain of automobiles, and uh, so independent of my rank in exam, etc., I jumped onto mechanical engineering because somebody said that if you have to be in engineer in uh, automobile. uh mechanical engineering is the only path to get into it which is completely untrue in today's context but anyway we'll come to that later uh and uh, then one of my dream companies was to join maruti and i realized that at that point in time maruti only used to only hire from iits and iims and since i did not go to an iit i thought uh, let me get into an iim hopefully i should be able to get into a maruti so i got into i am lucknow for my mba that was the only purpose i thought uh, lucknow being closer to delhi i will be able to get into maruti so that's how career counseling happened on those days <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know uh, there i was in 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 uh, i am lucknow and i was told that maruti doesn't visit i am lucknow it visits the other i am <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so i had to literally go out in my summer vacation reach out to maruti head office give my placement brochure and ask them to come and attend and fortunately for me they attended the placement season in our uh, campus that year and uh, i was one of the three people selected there and that's how my career started uh with a uh, entry into maruti spent about close to about 4 4 and a half years there primarily in supply chain then went on to work um in hardware assembly uh with a company at that time known as altos uh, which was part of pcl group uh, which used to make computers in india uh like hcl 
and uh, spent about a couple of years there in uh, SMT operations, uh, surface mount technology operation. And uh, then for uh, the next five years, I was with uh, Honeywell in the US, uh, basically working on um, turbochargers and turbine technologies. Uh, and uh, then I wanted to desperately return back to India. So joined a couple of friends who had just started a company called Career Launcher. Uh, joined them as part of the founding team and uh, ran the company for about 12 years uh, in education and training. Primarily into coaching. And now, how long you are with sector uh, automotive sector skill council? About five years, uh, ah, but in between, another five years I spent with HT Media after career launcher. Uh, oh, which HT. Was to set up their HT. Uh, ah, into education. Yeah, into education oh. and training. So I was uh, setting up that business for them in Delhi and CR for about five years, but then they decided not to continue. <laughs> That uh, business so kind of moved out. And so here I am so with your career is company. very interesting. You started <laughs> with mechanical, and then went to management, then went to automotive, then went to Tata Honeywell, then you went to you know not Tata Honeywell, just Honeywell. Honeywell, Honeywell yeah. uh, so electrical more into and you know yeah, power systems, systems more than yeah power, power systems. systems. Yeah. Then you came back. Uh, then uh, you did a start. A, a small company in and today's then world media. it's a startup yeah yeah it's a startup or yeah. media yeah. and now you're with the sector uh, skill council yeah. oh fantastic yeah. so and so i think i think you, you have seen a lot of different sectors and you can actually guide a large number of students you know so the sure. primary objective of this uh, entire series is to just have a casual talk very cool talk mm. with students uh, allow them to ask any questions, you know, sure. and uh, we try to answer them to best of our ability. Yeah. Uh, okay. We also give a disclaimer to students that this is what we feel. It need not be the right answer or it need not be the only answer. Yeah, okay. So sure. I will be discussing with you from time to time, but uh, yeah. let's take a uh, couple of questions if possible and then Arinda, yeah, yeah, I would like sure. you to talk about how this automobile sector is automobile, also yeah, I'll do uh, that after that yeah. because the reason is, the reason I am doing this is because the, uh, the monologue sometimes becomes too yeah, uh, yeah, this, uh, oh, attention yeah. span because is not <laughs> there, so uh, let me take few people uh, so we have uh, Amitabh uh, 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 Upadhyaya and Akhilesh Verma yeah. uh, with us. So, Akhilesh Ji, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? You are not audible. You need to. You need to unmute. Akhilesh, no, you are not audible, Akhilesh. You need to unmute yourself. I did B.Tech from J.K. Institute at Abad Nasti. Okay. In so 1984. What are you doing? Currently, I'm retired. Uh, after retirement in nine, uh, 2022, I am at IIT Roorkee in research okay. project. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, I hope you are not asking for career guidance. For <laughs> I, we so, should be asking now. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Arvata. yeah. So we should be actually coming to you, Akhilesh. But anyway, you could be a good panelist. So let's let's reach out to students uh, and let's see whether they have any questions. You know, because um, uh, so um, Amitab, are you there? Deepak Sharma and uh, Sakshi Swaran, you need to allow your device to connect, you know, otherwise you will not able to talk. So you can drop out and allow your device to connect. Your, when you go, get into Chrome, you have to give that permission, you know, Chrome or your browser will ask for a permission and then you have to do that. I will also take uh, you are. So, Jiva, any questions from your side you would like to discuss? Uh, 
Hey, Chihuahua. Huh? Huh? Uh, we can we cannot hear you. Means uh, it's very very weak. Please. Can you be a bit yes. louder? Can you can you share your experience, sir? About what? So tell me, Chihuahua, from where you are? Um, from Dindigal, sir. Huh? Dindigal. Dindigal. Dindigal from PSNI College. Dindigal, uh, Coimbatore, near Gwe. Uh, Dindigal, Dindigal. Dindi. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And what are you doing? Sir, I am learning first year in college, PSNI College. Okay. From Which ADS stream? department. ADS department. ADS department. AIDS means which? AI data science. Uh, artificial intelligence data science. AIDS. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. AIDS. Artificial intelligence data science. So, so what is your question? Jiva, what is your question? Sir. Hey, Jiva. Any question? I think there is pro some problem. I think uh, I, I will just remove Jiva because then we can give others. Amitab. Do you want to ask any question or shall I remove you? No, I think he has also joined. Okay, let me uh, take Nandini and Nivedita. So welcome Nandini and Nivedita. Nandini has dropped out. Why? Nandini, are you there? Nandini, are you there? Nobody wants to talk. Deepak and uh, Nath Gopal, you need to allow your device. Amitabh? Yes, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar, Amitabh. We were trying to. Uh, huh. Yes, sir. How are you, Amitabh? Ji, aap? Sir, I am from Bhopal okay. and uh, I have been working in Airline City Group for the last uh, 21 years. Okay. And I have done my PhD in Chemistry from Vikram University Vijay in 2000. Okay, okay. 2000. So yes. what is your question? What you would like to know from the panel? We have Anindam yes, today, our special guest, and then we have Venki also. Yes, yes, sir. I am very thrilled to see and uh, listen. Uh, no, that's okay. Experience. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. But do you have any specific comment or question from your side? Yes, I want to ask you that in today's time, the mobile phone is the goal of students to focus on their goals. It can be a very distracted thing. It can be a very interfering radical. So, how do we get to them? रिसेंट न्यूज देखा है कि नहीं के फेसबुक ने के ऊपर चालीस स्टेट्स ने यूएस स्टेट्स ने लॉस उठ फाइल कर दिया है वेंकी आर यू अवेयर yeah, day before yesterday, 40 states have filed yeah, lost for against phone addiction. Meta, Meta for phone addiction only. And I, I, I have not seen those documents. I really want to see those documents. They have released some insider has released a document saying that uh, uh, company actually tried compromising safety over uh, profits. You know, so they had some internal study where they said that a few things were getting addictive. Okay. But that was generating profit for them. So they tried to suppress that uh, those documents. And actually, uh, so there was a whistle, there is some lady who, who is a whistleblower, you know, and based on that document, actually, 
these uh, states have ex- filed a suit against meta you know so coming back to your question i don't know uh, how this question is rel- related to uh, career guidance for students but what we can i can say is that uh, certainly yes it's a distraction undoubtedly i am also struggling at my home <laughs> with the same problem my son who is doing mbbs and my daughter who is in school ah a huge problem lot of fighting is there we have and every day my wife is scolding but having said this what we need to figure out ways to actually ensure that we use these tools to our benefits and from ai city perspective i will tell you we have now, we are now very focusing on that you know for doing all our assignments for actually uh, exploring how uh, we can uh, push students to uh, for, uh, use mobile from for pedagogy you know because as for new education policy you know we have to use uh, latest of technologies and that is the reason we are actually pushing large number of colleges to have learning management systems because now everything is hybrid online right i have a hybrid mode so there is a lot of online component which is there and if you have to have a good online component it means you have to have a robust learning management system and if you have to and and if you have a good robust learning management system then yes the videos will be available at fingertips with the students and students can actually go ahead and use them apart from that we are actually tying up with few companies uh at tech companies to explore how we can get into personalized learning one you know so delivery at personalized because mobiles could actually help in personalized learning in really good way my rate of learning will be very different than my my friends rate of learning you know and if we have an ai tool built into these technologies then the entire syllabus or the entire course along with questions could be paced according to uh, my ability to learn you know and from that perspective if we have right kind of tools developed with us uh, we these mobiles or tablets or these handheld devices could be of immense help so we have also tied up with companies uh, to explore how these tools could be made you know apart from that i don't know whether you are aware uh, last about a couple of weeks back uh, aict <laughs> went ahead and announced uh, one student one laptop uh, policy you know i know it's slightly digressing but the, the primary objective is that itself ki now we cannot uh, have uh, students or we cannot uh, teach students without latest technologies and we want them to use latest of the tools which are out there you know so one student one laptop officially we went ahead and declared that policy apart from that uh, in our approval process handbook from this year means last year Uh, we have that process is already out we have told colleges that now they need not have all these drawing labs you know first year because engineering drawing jo hai na and every lab sh- uh, every college should actually now shift to cad cam based uh, because now nobody actually uses uh, t's and those kind of things so uh, that uh, so what i wanted to convey from all this is technology is imperative what we can do is that how we can go ahead and use these technologies so at your college level you come up with some kind of lms which will help push videos and which will help students use mobile for that apart from that at aict level we are certainly doing it anyway 
I hope this answers the question to some extent. But now again, we will go to a small monologue from Arindam because I think there are no automobile still related questions. So, Arindam, we had circulated right. our this across the colleges. We have large number of students also joining. I don't know whether you can see them or not. But uh, you know, none of them. So Deepak, Vijay, Malti, Mateshwaran, Mohammad. See, you have joined the studio, but you need to allow your device to connect, you know. So you have to give permission to your browser. Otherwise, you will not able to speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and if you are not going to speak, then please watch this video on YouTube. Don't, uh, don't just uh, so be in the studio. So I'm kicking all of you out. If you want to join join by giving permission to your browser the, just don't occupy the space here you know okay so arindam go ahead so what do you okay. think about uh, automobile sector how e evs are going to change the sector you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know today whether you checked uh, Adani gas, total gas shares have come down drastically, you know. I Markets know are you... anyway in a topsy turvy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but I think, uh, you know, uh, so just to give you a background, you know, automobile sector is uh, a very, very important sector. In fact, it Deepak is Sharma, last, Deepak Sharma, okay. last warning for you. If you will not allow your device to connect, huh, then I am not going to, I am going to ban you. Okay? You are just occupying my studio. Sorry, go ahead, Arvind. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just to give you a background, uh, you know, quickly, uh, automotive industry in India is a very very important industry in the whole context of the numbers and how it shapes up in the overall uh, scenario it's currently the overall fourth largest automobile market in the world uh, so that makes it a very significant uh, you know a participant in the global automotive industry um, Within India, it's close to about 40% uh, of the manufacturing GDP contribution coming in from the automotive industry. And it employs close to about 3 crore people uh, directly or indirectly in this particular industry. So there is a lot of opportunities in this particular industry. And the good news is that it's growing also at a very uh, a rapid pace, about 15 to 20% in uh, many segments you know within the automotive industry there are multiple segments because of the kind of vehicles we are talking about while we talk about automobile in general but there is a uh, two-wheeler segment three-wheeler segment uh, four wheelers commercial vehicles within which you have light medium and heavy commercial vehicles and then you have special vehicles uh, you know which are related to let's say infrastructure uh, equipment, etc., etc. <laughs> so all of these make a very interesting amalgamation of the various technologies available across different streams of engineering. And in today's context, uh, if we look at how technology has evolved in the automobile industry, we see that it has moved from being a mechanical device to being an electromechanical device to now a very uh, computing device, so to say, because everything is kind of chip controlled in terms of what the vehicle does. Whatever we used to do in mechanical system, which is either pneumatic system, fluid driven or hydro, I mean, pneumatic uh, air driven or hydraulics, fluid driven. Uh, these are mostly controlled by sensors, uh, you know, electric, uh, electronic control units. Uh, you know, uh, various uh, hardware that goes into the system and also a lot of software into the system. Uh, you know, uh, recently uh, we've been grappling with this issue that mostly people have to wait for 
vehicle delivery from six months to 12 months. Uh, it's just that vehicles were being produced, but the issue was with semiconductors. And uh, suddenly, automobile is now the number three in the world to use semiconductors in terms of the capacity that the whole semiconductor industry uses. Uh, the topmost user being mobile, and then you have the computing devices, the laptop yes. computers, and the third is the automobiles, you know, which uses the semiconductors, uh, the chips. So it's a very interesting domain, no matter which field of engineering you belong to. Uh, even if you are in chemical or metallurgy, there are very, very significant and exciting work being done. Talking about electric vehicle mobility, I would say electric vehicle mobility has broken the monopoly of IC engines. So that's mm. the news, you know. But having said that, only electric vehicle is not going to be there. There will have to be many different kinds of fuel factors which will be there. So you have fuel cells, you have hydrogen powered vehicles, you have now flex fuel engines which is ethanol powered biodiesel powered uh, a whole bunch of and within bat electric vehicle the battery technology has many devices so while it is lithium ion sodium ion in today's context toyota is already very close to the commercial version of no solid state batteries now Sorry. near solid state batteries you know in terms of the energy storage uh, of course, hydrogen is there. Hydrogen also has two different uh, streams of development happening right now. One is on fuel cell, the other is on using hydrogen as a fuel in an IC engine itself, uh, which, it's, uh, which is also another opportunity that has opened up. So from an engineering uh, you know, standpoint, this is one of the most exciting industries to be part of because it's a confluence of so many different technologies. And if you have to be part of this industry, you need to have a, a multidimensional perspective. While you might be an expert in one domain, but you need to have a multidimensional ex, 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 uh, interest because uh, unless you can converge all of these technologies into this piece of an equipment called an automobile. So, Arinda, do you believe that now chemical engineers have far more uh, opportunity in this sector uh, than it was earlier? Uh, yes, I mean, I think the variation is wide. As far yeah. as chemical engineers is concerned, there was always, because paints was always there, there was, uh, you know, uh, plastics. A lot of plastics go into the vehicle, uh, you know, rubber goes into the vehicle. Tires itself is such a fascinating piece of an equipment in the car. Uh, you know, there is so much work and technology that is happening around it. Uh, so chemical, metallurgical, definitely I think the importance has gone up significantly because alternate material, alternate uh, processes uh, of uh, using some of these chemical, equip uh, chemical uh, compounds are being very, very actively uh, used in the automobile industry because now the concept is that entire automobile is an iot right yeah yeah car is itself as an iot device you know yeah you are that's the concept which is now getting mainstream right and it's a complex iot because it's a mobile yes. iot exposed to weather conditions and everything else you know? Right, it's a mobile right. computing device actually yeah it's yeah. a mobile <laughs> without the screen maybe not with the screen yes. yeah no even without the screen, screen. No, oh, now, without. now yes, we yeah. have large and large display yeah yeah you know yeah. i think this display units are one of the yeah. biggest it's getting bigger and bigger in a car you know i am right. i am sure maybe in future if autonomous comes in you could have a whole uh, windscreen yeah, entertainment center can be in the car curved. itself yeah your, your whole windscreen can be a curved Display unit. Display. Yeah. Uh, because you don't need to see up front because your autonomous car is driving it. Yeah, that uh, that is soon going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, so we have Tamil Selvan and Surya SP. Large number of students are trying to join, but somehow I think they are not connecting their devices. I don't know why. Today, 
we never had this problem this is very uh, this is very unique for today so tamil selvan yeah, i think abha you may want to tell people that they can watch the videos uh, on youtube but they can yeah. send the yeah. questions on chat also maybe we can yeah. pick up some questions from chat can pick well. up question yeah. from chat yeah deepak uh, uh deepak sharma you are chatting so why don't you type your question i can take your question from chat okay Huh? Yeah, and mean you can leave the the panel here right yeah so hasini raga is another person who has joined hasini please unmute yourself so deepak can you can you just type your question because we have many people but somehow i don't know what's happening tamil selvan do you want to do you want to speak hasini i don't know why these people okay okay we will continue with our discussion arindam so yeah arindam uh so do you think that uh, uh ha akhilesh do you want to say something or do you want to add ask anything please continue ah uh, okay so so uh, arinda uh, currently in, in india if you really look at automobile sector you you see we have approved up to adas level 2 if hmm. i understand correctly Yeah. but we ha- there are four four or five levels of adas yeah know? five uh, levels five levels yeah. of adas so yeah. uh, do you think in near future uh, we are moving in that direction and h- h- how much time you think uh, we will take when we will have actually approval for all five levels i am very curious yeah. about adas okay. you know okay see my personal view would be that level 5 is not dependent on technology alone Mm-hmm. i think there is a very strong uh, factor about the legality mm-hmm. of using that kind of a level which is like a fully fully autonomous mm-hmm. uh, it may happen in certain use cases i have read of, I, i mean i know about this particular but in india where cases. you get vehicles coming in in the line ah. from in the line from oh, but, but there are there there are use cases where it can be uh-huh. done very well you know there is a very good use case which has been done in delhi airport you see these push back vehicles in the aircraft which right. today pushes it back from the from the terminal building out to start moving towards the runway right. that vehicle is driven in today's mm. context they have already experimented with a fully autonomous vehicle uh, which is uh, electric uh, okay. and they have also started carrying the aircraft right till the entrance point of the runway okay so the aircraft doesn't burn tf till the time it reaches the point of entry to the runway hmm. which is a huge saving also actually right and right. the whole thing can be done on an autonomous format okay oh, okay uh, then you can look at fully autonomous use case of campus movements Hmm. uh so one of our oem actually has in their own campus these golf carts which hmm. have been now completely autonomous uh, made completely autonomous which hmm. means you just go in uh, sit in the car uh, vehicle give it a command which building you want to go and it takes you there and there you can just ask them to go back to the home so mm. you don't have an issue that somebody you have to employ somebody to drive this golf carts around you so these mm. are very interesting use cases which are developing and i think it as level 5 will be used in that kind of a controlled environment and not in a public road uh, which mm. seems very difficult with the current legal but what do you think we can go at least up to level 3 in india or that's also level 3 should be possible level 3 is uh, manual override i think right. there are already models in the us and other places where it's been found to be working pretty okay so so level 3 is like cruise control right arindam yeah cruise it's it's a cruise cruise adaptive control room, 
adaptive uh, use control. Adaptive. Adapt. It, it, it's it's right I mean, it does the distance. Control. Their proximity yeah, sensor is also there, right? Yeah, proximity. Yeah, proximity. That is two. That is level two. Proximity sensor where the car no, applies brakes. Proximity control. I think that is level three. If I'm not wrong, I don't know. I don't know. You may be able to. So uh, no, I, I you know uh, level three is still going to have the steering. You mm -hmm. will still be controlling everything as a manual process, but the vehicle can run where you want to leave the vehicle. So. You can take your hands and feet off, but you can't, uh, you know, take your mind off. Okay. Uh, is how they define it, essentially. So, okay. at a level three. At a level four, you can actually take your mind off. It will prompt you when you need to intervene. And level five is where you don't even have an option to intervene. Okay. You know, so that's the kind of change. But yes, it has level two is more as an assistant. It's a driver's mm -hmm. assistant, uh, truly speaking, essentially huh. up to level two. That you are deviating from the lane, so it will help you stay on the lane. Uh, emergency braking due to proximity sensor, uh, etc. But uh, beyond that, it won't drive on its own in that sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was curious about ADAS, so thanks Arindam for enlightening me on that. Now coming back to careers in automobile sector. So, uh, automobile sector is growing at an unprecedented scale, undoubtedly. But what do you think is an appetite of an automobile sector if uh, of I means uh, ITIs, vis-a-vis diplomas, vis-a-vis engineer? You know, I, if you have to put some ratio, uh, because I get that question a lot from students mm. that sir whether i should stop at after doing diploma means my chances of actually getting a job are better at diploma level or i should go for a degree level you know mm. and uh, there i will have better chances so what is your view when it comes to automobile sector iti so, versus diploma versus degree so, you, uh, you know, one of the best things to also look at some of the Western nations which have which have matured as a market and we take in automobile industry uh, a market like Germany as a very uh, good reference point. Hmm. So bulk of the people working in the German auto industry would be at a diploma uh, uh, or a technical school level, essentially. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Degree engineers are only required in the R&D engineering functions where mm -hmm. something new is to be created or something existing has to be tinkered with, essentially, mm -hmm. which is where you need your core engineering skills. Otherwise, mm -hmm. from a regular routine operation perspective, a diploma is good enough, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? So, in terms of the Indian context, I would say at an ITI level, you basically are an operator technician level uh, that you will largely be at best you will come to a uh, supervisory uh, level if you show that aptitude etc but beyond that at a managerial level it will be difficult for you to transition essentially. but Arinda, with the automation that is happening uh, in the yeah. manufacturing sector as well do you see right. that even these you know the typical iti skills you also need to be up up one level Upskilled, right? Of course, of course. The the way the curriculum itself and the focus of the content, you know, today right. ITI largely is a uh, is a fitter job role. You know, right. I think a lot of taught welding, for example, job. you may not need a welder, a typical welder anymore, right? It's yeah, you will not need a typical welder, but you will need to do welding uh, by hand to know the process of welding, and then you sub upgrade yourself to robot. In fact, in automotive industry, we hardly have, uh, I mean, at a, a OEM level, you really don't have any manual welding. It is all Correct. robotized into Robotized, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but at the same time, you need to understand if the, if the robo setups are uh, working fine, etc. So, which is why I'm saying that diplomas have a very significant role because mm. diplomas uh, bridge that gap between the operator and the engineer. In terms of the so it would be more on the instrumentation side that you would need some of these skills, right? Especially when you're talking control, about control, control, control the robots and stuff. Yeah. 
So if you have to put some ballpark number, I don't, I, I know, Arina, I don't want to put you in a fix, you know, mm -hmm. but if you want, if you have to, if you take these big uh, automobile companies, like mm -hmm. say uh, Maruti or Volvo mm -hmm. or, you know, Hondas, you know, TVSs uh, mm -hmm. or Tatas, huh? for every engineer they hire, okay, mm -hmm. how many diplomas they end up hiring and how many ITIs they end up hiring? If, so you, if, you, if you can answer, if you cannot yeah, answer, yeah. fine. So fine. I, I may not be able to give you a very exact number, but I'll give you a sense okay. of it. Essentially, right. you know? So uh, if you look at very large companies like these vehicle manufacturers, mm -hmm. the number of engineers to number of diploma engineers will be maybe 1 is to 1.5 or 2 at best, essentially. And uh, then you have operators, which might be another, uh, from an engineer perspective, maybe three to four times maximum, but not more than that. But the fact of the matter is that automotive industry is a very tired industry. There are various tires of, of manufacturing operation. The moment you go to tire one, then tire two and tire three, these equations change very rapidly. At a tire three level, you might need only one engineer in one unit and no more than that. Uh, but you may need hundreds of operators because everything has already been tested, tried and fixed and everything. It's just the routine task of producing, producing, producing. Uh, I mean, today so we have the You're talking about uh, uh, the auto components, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah. These are all suppliers to suppliers auto suppliers, to auto ancillaries. Yeah, yeah. So the biggest, uh, you know, uh, employment in the automotive industry is very pyramidical in nature. So you have the least number of employment in these auto majors. Then you have these auto suppliers, auto ancillary units. And the biggest is in the auto dealerships because you have a huge number of uh, sales and technical service uh, manpower that you need essentially for vehicles. So, uh, and, and there the requirement of engineers goes down significantly. It's more of diploma and more of ITI or uh, just a technically trained person. Trained. Yeah. Sorry, you are on mute. Are on mute. Venki, I was actually surprised when I was talking to a few people from the sector because recently we had Arindam at AICT and we had a few other people from automobile sector. And I was asking them about the pay packages and the, and I was told that ITIs were getting anywhere between pay package between lakh to one, 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh per month, you know. Yeah, yeah. Is that the case for yeah. all? Uh, I I was really surprised when ITIs were getting so much. When, they were getting yeah. and diplomas were also getting equivalent. But the degrees were not getting <laughs> that kind of pay scale, you know. No, these are these are not entry salaries, but right. these are obviously experienced uh, people. Yeah. A very right. good welder, very good machinist, uh, or a uh, or a paint specialist. Uh, these are people who command a very high premium because these skills are very, uh, very, very challenging. I mean, today, one of the, one of the, I mean, there are many areas where we are struggling with the skills. For example, CNC programming. Yeah. Hmm. CNC programmer is a big challenge. Ah. You know, so if an ITI guy has actually learned how to also program, he can earn quite a lot i mean but he the challenge the skill is, as well as the computing skills in some sense yes yes so those kind so, of people are very so, very high in demand so arindam what you will suggest to our young diploma students you know uh, mm -hmm. who are just uh, passing out or you know degree students you know right. that what they should do to actually remain more relevant in automobile sector, what kind of skills they should actually uh, gain or work on or achieve, you know? Yeah. So I think there are uh, two layers of, uh, you know, uh, area or, or two kind of areas that I would want to emphasize on. 
Mm. One is the system level understanding of how automotive works because automotive is about 10, 11 different subsystems. Mm. You know, so you need to understand the subsystems. You know, if there is a brake and wheel system, there's a power train, uh, uh, then there is, uh, you know, engine or power source, mm. uh, steering controls, interiors, mm. exteriors, etc., etc. Mm. One needs to have a, a very uh, broad level understanding of the systems if you want to work in automotive because all these systems are interacting with each other all the time in an automotive and therefore when you work even if you are machining a, a nut in a brake part vis-a-vis -vis mm. somewhere else you need to understand what is the difference between a nut failing in a brake system vis-a-vis -vis a nut failing in a dashboard system kind mm. of a situation you mm. know so so these uh, these are very important elements the second mm. is about manufacturing process itself because mm. it's a very manufacturing industry you mm. may be an engineer you may be doing design you may be doing testing but mm. you must have a very clear understanding of how does it get manufactured and maintained so we we've always learned in your you know fmea or those kind of tools as to uh, how do you understand that where can your design fail hmm. you know uh, in in production process in maintenance process etc hmm. and hmm. you cannot do that if you are doing only designing on a computer hmm. you need to be hands on so hmm. you need to do the complete cycle of learning which hmm. means that you design you produce and you see that it is fixed it is getting fixed the whole mm. idea of dimensions, mm. tolerances, mm. because mm. Uh, automobile is a very, very compact device. You know, mm. the tolerances are very tight, you know, mm. everything that sits in. Uh, these are very important. And then if you are coming in from electronics or software side, mm. you know, the challenge is that you may understand the basics of that, but how, do, how can that impact in a mobility system like mm. an automotive? is very mm. important one of our biggest shortage area which i think all degree engineers must know is we don't have enough automotive software engineers there mm. are people who understand automobile there are people who understand software but there are mm. very few people who understand both mm. and if mm. they don't understand both it's very difficult uh, to uh, you know uh, do uh, programs and but uh, Anindam, there are whether there are any specific courses on automotive software, like or, or especially. We are software. we are launching. In fact, there is an open source platform called Autosar, which is being adopted by more and more automobile manufacturers. Mm. And one must try and do a course at least in Autosar or some other uh, automotive application software areas, which mm. are very important. At least that gives them the idea of how the whole mobility process works. And and this is a, a, a Autosar is an open source tool. Yes, yeah, the open source platform open source for automotive okay. software. Yeah. So uh, whether you have designed any courses which we can put on? We Swayam? have. We have. Uh -huh. we, so, we, we are working on the content. Uh, I think we should uh -huh. soon be ready. We are working with a few partners, uh, partner companies who are working on these areas. Mm. And uh, so, we'll be quite happy to share so, that as we are Yeah, yeah. Ready. So let's explore, Arindam, that how we can put it, these things on Swayam and yeah. make it available to large number of students as much as possible. Because yeah. as you rightly say, if we can train students on them and mm. actually ensure that they are become... Because automobile sector is contributing. It's, a, it's one of the biggest contributors to our uh, uh, GDP, you know. Yeah. So how much? 10-12% uh, of our GDP? Right now, I think it's about 9% or so, 8-9%. or so. And uh, also about 8-9% <laughs> on terms of exports for both right. components and vehicles put together. So, ah. <clears throat> yeah. so it's a very, 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 very important sector for this country. And the way it is growing, it is yeah. extremely promising. Anyway, we have Dhruv uh, with us. Let's see whether now, Dhruv There has... are also some questions on the chat. We may want to take some. So, uh, uh, do you want to take Venki? Any of these Let's questions? first uh, maybe ask Dhruv if he's, uh, if he's online, we'll ask him and then maybe he'll take yeah, the questions. Yeah, yeah. Dhruv, are you there? Because you had opened yeah. your camera also. Uh, yes, sir. So Dhruv, so Dhruv uh, you are from which college? 
Sir, I am from MIT RC Alwar. MIT. MIT okay. RC. MIT RC. Okay, Alwar, Rajasthan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Good. Thanks for joining, bro. So, what are you doing there? Sir, I am currently pursuing BTEC from Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning branch. Okay, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning branch. And what what are your uh, plans for future? Sir, I want to start uh, I start up and uh, own. You want business, to do sir. your own startup? Yes. Uh, Rajasthan se ho, to company banane ka hai, paisa banane ka hai. Yes, sir. Paisa banana hai. So, <laughs> 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 uh, to kis kis area mein startup karna chahte ho? Sir, uh, plastic industries mein. So, plastic hai. industry mein. To plastic yes, industry ka to bahut application hai automobile sector mein. हाँ सर उसी से related सर कि और भी क्या products है वो manufacturing कर सकते हैं और जो अब तक जो recyclable चल रहा है उससे भी और ज़्यादा recycling process ला सके हाँ तो अनिंदम do you have any comment uh, to offer to Dhruv or any guidance for Dhruv yeah no very good to hear this uh, so plastics is important uh, recycling is very important as you rightly mentioned um, so one is of course you can do plastics uh, and there are various processes of uh, using recycled material uh, reusing of plastics uh, how do you still give the desired strength uh, on that uh, part that you produce uh so and and if you can think of some alternate uh, materials you know let me tell you automobile industry is uh, very keen to see more alternate material which can be more biodegradable uh, more recyclable material there is major, very major work that is happening uh, around using bamboo uh, as a raw material for many of the plastic parts in the trims. Trims okay. is what you see in the inside of a door or, uh, you know, mm. that uh, handles mm. and stuff like that. So uh, what percentage so of uh, vehicle is plastic? 5%? Uh, right, uh, probably more, uh, more value-wise because the dashboards itself are very costly. And okay. very fancy, and they are all plastic. So these they are, are injection molded, right? Two dashboards, yeah, two, they are injection molded. The uh, two dashboards and the major, uh, the, the the dashboard and the two bumpers are right. very large plastic parts, and then there are a whole lot of trim parts which are plastic in. And the seats and I think are plastic with then the upholstery is only on top of it, right? No. No seats are uh, sheet metal. They are they are sheet, sheet metal, metal frames, metal. sheet metal frames, and then they have sponge, and then they have upholstery material. So in so plastics, about, uh, Rube, so let about me tell ten you, to twenty percent. Twenty percent, you can say. Twenty percent about. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you will be quite happy to know some of our Indian manufacturers are actually world leaders in plastic oh. parts. Okay. okay. And uh. I can tell you if you want to visit a plastic. Uh, uh, manufacturing center in automotive in Nimrana, uh, please do. There are a few plastic units uh, in the Nimrana industrial area near Honda, uh, which you can go from Alwar, not too far from there. Yes, sir. And and see for yourself. Uh, and if you want, you can connect back to me or whatever if you need any help. Sir, my father actually uh, manufactured plastic products. Okay. From injection molding machine. Right. Sir, so my father. If you have plastic, if you have to do plastic, and you are doing this, artificial AI intelligence. data science, AI data science, how are you doing this? How is it? No, sir, it is my own startup. I mean, what is it, sir? My father, sir, is. Directly purchase karte, sir, raw material. No, that's fine. You have to start up plastic in plastic. That's what you're saying. But you're doing course AI data science. Oh, uh, both are your choice. Hai. Ye kaisa okay. hai? How are you reconciling both these things? So, uh, so my father is actually uh, manufacturing plastic products. Okay. Uh, and uh, okay. he is a world leader in plastic products. Okay. Uh, 
मेटीरियल से नहीं बनता है नहीं वो तो वो तो बेसिक प्लास्टिक से ही बनेगा बट रिसाइकल मटेरियल यूज होता है बट द मोर रिसाइकल्ड मटेरियल यू यूज द स्ट्रेंथ गोज डाउन सो इफ यू आर पुटिंग लाइक बम्पर और समथिंग वेयर द इंपैक्ट फोर्स इज कैन बी लार्ज एंड इट हैज टू होल्ड सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ यू कैन नॉट यूज अ होल लॉट ऑफ रिसाइकल्ड प्लास्टिक इन देयर बिकॉज़ देयर विल बी लो लॉट मेनी पॉइंट्स ऑफ फ्रैक्चर दैट कैन हैपन due to a high high impact collision essentially so that those kind of elements will have also have to be thought through you know we had people from uh, pns college uh, then uh, we have many people from that college actually 4 5 6 <laughs> then dyna a huge number of people from that college you know are they completely flooded with those people from okay so, okay so dindigal it's no ha huh? lot of people so, from dindigal right ha ah, dindigal Dindigal. lot of people lot of people from dindigal then we have some people from salem um, i think uh, we can uh, start acknowledging uh, them uh, because it's already 2154 meanwhile i will request venki to take up some questions if they are there okay let me go to the private chat and see if there are any questions right sir one more uh, yaad ro sir ye future scopes kya hain sir machine learning ke after 2 or 3 years hai abhi tum puch rahe the plastic ka kya karoge abhi puch rahe ho machine learning ka kya karoge it is just starting right see you heard arindam talk about you know just i am talking about in the automotive context we are just in you know level 2 we have to go to level 3 level 4 level 5 all of them require a whole lot of machine learning without that how do you even go up from level 2 to level 3 okay that is only in the automotive sector ev sector okay uh, but you look at machine learning in other sectors like in healthcare machine learning in banking yes. there's a whole lot of things to be done with fraud detection and so on and then this whole new thing that has come up in the last one year on you know generative ai which hmm. is about creating content right there's a whole lot of uh, scope there the possibilities both on the positive side yeah there are you know content being created now how do you make sure that that content is actually not violating any intellectual property it's not uh, it is not fake all those things have to be now tools and technologies have to evolve to be able to address those so so whole lot of new things challenges that will come up that need so the scope is just It, you're just scratching the surface right now it will just explode in the coming years yeah it's going to really really explode but uh, venki there's a very interesting question from deepak sharma he is talking uh, yeah. about space sector space you know? sector huh? but i want to actually uh, join our discussion today means actually take leaf from our discussion today so arindam i just want to ask you just pick your brain if possible again huh do you think that the growth of uh, our system, what we can say automotive sector is directly or indirectly going to give a huge push to even space sector um i think because very... because now this cars are getting into a lot of aerodynamic yeah. things are happening you know lot of iot is getting a lot of you know and these kind of although although both these sectors are pretty different oh, in a nice sense one. but ha uh, uh, so because uh, see the amount of physics and uh, precision you need in space is far far, far. i think it is two orders of magnitude so higher so than hierarchically you, you know in auto industry we say that whatever comes into space industry over a period of time many of them percolate into aerospace industry or aviation yeah. industry and then and, and then, then many of them right. then come to automotive ah, industry okay. okay so that's the hierarchy so know? so yeah. that is the journey of saab what you are talking yeah. about you know yeah. this first started making jet engines and then they eventually made cars you know yeah yeah, yeah. 
So, no, but so that either way, it has to be right because the, exactly. the tolerance for errors in space versus you know space industry versus aviation versus cars. I mean that itself there's an order of magnitude. Yeah, but I I think currently Plus if you really look at the position, alternate material, all of yeah, this is very yeah, important. Earlier it might have been true, but even now. If you check with the precision at automation industry or automotive industry, which you require is now very high. I yeah, yeah. But but for aircraft, you need much higher, right? Uh, See, right. Automotive right. is more rep repetitive and at volume, so that makes it more complex in the in one way. But right. there, the volumes are much lower. But but your actual okay. tolerance is much much sharp. Right? Like yeah. Much much. Smaller. Yeah, I know there are a lot of our auto component industry people. Who yeah, because now, uh, yeah, that was what space auto and space. Yes, they are now suppliers to both of them. Yeah, so yeah. one of our major, uh, you know, promoting companies, you know, mm. uh, started as an auto component company, moved mm. to aerospace, is today a supplier to Boeing, etc., and mm. now also supplies parts to ISO. So mm. as a tire one supplier also. So mm. they've made that journey. So there are people who are moving in that direction as well. Mm. So, so this is the answer to question your question. For you, maybe I'll just read it out for you. Uh, uh, Jeeva for has asked, what are the current challenges and opportunities for professionals in the art automotive aftermarket and servicing sector? And so servicing sector. Mm. Yeah, very good question. I think automotive aftermarket is itself an industry, you know, because uh, the, it, it is it employs such a huge number of people. And let me tell you first things first, that globally, there is a huge shortage of skilled manpower in the automotive aftermarket. Uh, markets like Japan, Europe, uh, US, Australia are struggling. You know, there are only 45 countries which make automobiles hmm. but the rest of the uh, countries which is up to 200 plus com uh, countries uh, everybody uses it and they yeah. need car servicing you know yeah. uh, automotive aftermarket is there so there is huge challenge gl uh, globally to meet such people i think the way the nature of the automotive aftermarket is moving is that again it is the same in terms of technology so today, you know, the typical view of an automotive service was get under the car and look for what is wrong with the car. That doesn't help in today's context. You have to plug in your laptop, run your diagnostic software, understand the error code and go and find and fix it. So, so diagnostic skills by using of software, diagnostic softwares, is one of the key challenges in the automotive aftermarket today because you have mostly traditional manpower in that segment who wants to observe or visually diagnose problems visually or basically using your own senses human senses to do servicing you know car mein awaaz kahan se aa raha hai smell kahan se aa raha hai you know these kind of things. But today, you have to completely go into, uh, you know, software driven uh, solutions, except for the some core, uh, you know, uh, mechanical parts. Uh, and therefore, uh, it is a huge opportunity for youngsters to get into this space and make a global career, you know, globally in Europe, if you are a good aftermarket service guy, your starting salary levels at apprentice level in Indian currency is between 2 lakhs to 3 lakhs. Mm. If you are an apprentice service technician. You know, so, and if you uh, know a little bit of hybrid and all, it can go up to 5 lakh Indian rupee. Equivalent. So Arindam, I want yeah. to actually specifically take this question forward and I want to ask how Sector Skills Council, your Sector Skills Council, is actually helping in this regard because I also want you to elaborate because students who are keen on pursuing career should approach your uh, sector skill council, you know? Sure, sure. Mm. So uh, I think we work on two uh, particular methods. One is to create more awareness among various mm. learners. So we mm. have a bouquet of free learning material which is hosted on our website so that people start getting awareness and 
we get it from directly from the manufacturers themselves. So our hybrid uh, electric vehicle course is from Toyota. Uh, the basics of electricals, electronics, etc., is from Volvo Aisha. So the, the, that way we have these courses and programs, which is largely to ensure that people are aware of what changes have happened and how does the modern automobile work, essentially. Mm. The second is then if you are interested further, then we connect them to our network of training centers, which could be in a college, which could be in a ITI, which could be a standalone training center. Uh, which operate some of our programs which have been curated by our experts from the industry themselves which who who understand what are the very specific areas of uh, learning uh, that one needs to focus on and more on hands-on uh, focus uh, because whatever we do is largely project-based learning and you need to do a project you need to do those assignments to be able to complete a program effectively. Mm. And mm. Uh, most of our programs also have a component, significant component of on the job training where we connect them to the relevant uh, industry uh, organization where they can actually get exposed to work uh, in an mm. environment which is actual. They may not still be able to get hands on there because mm. it's a live production system, but mm. being there, watching it, observing it, soaking that itself makes a huge difference to the whole uh, learning process and this is what is what our sector skill is focused on sector skill council is focused on in terms of ensuring that more people get a real sense of what they are getting into you know the challenge is a lot of people don't get an idea as to what they are getting into i mean you need to get an idea of what you are getting into and you mm. need to really figure out whether you love doing this or not. If Very you don't, true. then you, you should explore something else. Something you know, else. there is everything in the world that you can do. But uh, if you decide to get into it, you've got to love this. Yeah. And you've got to enjoy this. Otherwise, you will not succeed. So we have Karthik and Shreyas with us. Shreyas, do you want to ask any question? Or do you want to actually talk to Arindam? Mm, hello, sir. Huh. Actually, I'm from the basic sciences. Oh, you are from basic sciences. Yes. So where you yes. are from? I am from Maharashtra, Latur. Okay. And science Latur. okay. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So what is, uh, uh, do you have any question for Arindam? Very specific, anything? Uh, no, most of the program that I have attended is related with the, I think, engineering kind of uh, base is there. So huh. what, what what about the basic sciences that uh, we can do uh, different things like that? You know, we do. So that's what Arindam was talking about. Na? Arindam actually spoke at length about uh, application of chemistry, you know, yeah. uh, in automobile sector. You know, from batteries to paint technologies to you know rubber technologies and so on and so forth. All these technologies require chemists in large number. Basic scientists, chemists. You know, they require in large number and they hire them also. So that is where the real opportunity is, you know. The, the most important thing is that your focus has to be in that direction, that what I really would like to do. Uh, so if you want to do project, if you are doing MSc chemistry or something of that sort, then if you have a project or an assignment and if you take it, from that sector, if you take a problem statement from that sector, then it's far more easy for the students to actually move forward in that sector. Okay. <clears throat> okay, sir. Actually, we are doing the synthesis. We are working in the synthesis, organic compounds yeah. like that. Yeah, but there, 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 yeah, but there is an opportunity even in that, you know. So you are thinking about and that's what Arindam was saying. So you, you, what I will request you, Nashayas, I think you joined late. Okay. No, no, sir. I'm uh, since uh -huh. the last half an hour I was there, but I'm on YouTube. Just I have okay. login here. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. So what you should do, you should listen to this uh, discussion, and okay. uh, you will uh, get a uh, lot of uh, good insights. Okay. Yeah. okay. So a lot of work have... is happening on battery, so that's chemistry. Yes. So. Yeah, that's complete <laughs> chemistry. Yeah. 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 So most of the ions and other things physics is also. Uh -huh. yeah, physics yeah, and it's chemistry. Yeah, it's electrochemistry. Yeah, 
yeah. electric vehicles. So, so, uh, uh, so uh, Shreyas Agarwal is there. Shreyas. Shreya. Shreya, 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 Shreya Agarwal, sorry. Shreya, do you have any specific questions? Shreya? Yes. Okay, Shreya, where yes, are you Actually, from? Uh, I am from VIT Bhopal, Varanasi. Are you VIT Bhopal? VIT Bhopal, oh, okay, good. Yes, and what you I'm do, in Shreya? first year. Sir, okay, first uh, year. my branches... Yeah, my branch is ECE Core, and uh, I am uh, a bit more focused towards software uh, development. Like I am working in front end, uh, working towards my development of front end, and I'll be going to back end too after a, after some time. Uh, okay. Sir, actually, uh, actually, I had a query regarding Smart India Hackathon. Can I ask? This is not the forum to ask about this. Is about smart. Okay, okay, sir, go ahead, okay, go ahead, sir. go ahead. Okay, go ahead. What is the query? Sir, actually, uh, our team had committed a really, really big mistake. Can we? Uh, no, no. Let's mistake? not. Let's not. This is not okay, the forum sir. to discuss all that. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya. Okay. Okay, so Arindam, uh, I, I think uh, I will ask you a last question uh, because I, that, is, uh, that discussion was very interesting when you said that large number of countries are actually very, uh, they have shortage of manpower. And you know, mm -hmm. looking at uh, service uh, people or people for servicing or the servicing sector, uh, and India could be one of the uh, good um, suppliers. Uh, of manpower in that sector. So just wanted to ask that whether these diploma students or uh, ITS students or these degree students should pursue any foreign language along with the, their courses. So what uh, kind of package they should do, you know, what, what yeah. which will enable them to move in that direction? No, true. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you are... <clears throat> For example, if they have to, uh, so uh, whether you have come up with some kind of a matrix, Aninda, mm. that if you are targeting this company, for example, if you want to go to Germany, or if you want to go to Switzerland, if you want to go mm. to Japan, if you want to go yeah. to Portugal, uh, Portugal, you know, these are the tools in which you require expertise and the, these are the language competency, you know, yeah. and language competency up to this level, you know, for Germany, it may be level two or level three, or, you know, in Japanese yeah. level three three you know something of that sort yes, you know yes. whether some kind of metrics is available so i think for the major countries which are which we are uh, reaching out to today uh, uh, you know like germany or uk australia mm. uh, japan uh, these are some of the countries which come to my mind uh, top of the mind in terms of whatever skills are required we also know that uh, what are the top required skills which are relevant to the automotive. So typically, most of the uh, countries, the highest number of requirements is in terms of aftermarket service technicians, uh, body shop, which means people who do collision repairs. Yes. yes. You know, and uh, then you have paint, uh, paint right. repair. Okay. These are uh, some of the top-notch requirements. As far as manufacturing is concerned, people with knowledge in machining, welding, and assembly process are mm -hmm. the top three, which is also the top three in the domestic market in terms mm -hmm. of skilled manpower requirement. As far as various countries are concerned, I think the language proficiency requirement is typically about the work visa uh, language requirements. So most European companies or countries will require uh, a B1 visa for non-customer facing and for customer facing they will require a B2 in the language proficiency under the European curriculum uh, framework, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. language framework. As far as uh, J Japan is concerned, similarly visa requirements for N4 and 5 levels essentially. And in IELTS, uh, which is for countries like UK and US, uh, sorry, UK and Australia or so, you typically need a 5.5 .5 band plus uh, for your work visa. ILTS. 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 Okay. So, so these are the language skills and these are the core skills which are required. As far as uh, engineering, 
core engineering based roles are concerned i think there is a great demand for indian automotive software engineers uh, people who have worked in automotive space and has uh, software skills will be very heavily uh, high in demand and then there are requirements for design and test engineers test engineers who are conversant with various homologation processes either mm -hmm. to the european standards or to the necessary country standard whichever country they are kind of looking at mm -hmm. so what we can do narinda whenever you are there in delhi next time uh, or sure. uh, I can actually. I'm in India. Delhi. I'm, I'm huh. based in Delhi. So, no okay. yeah. uh, No, what I can do, I will actually invite you once to huh. uh, our AICT studio. You have seen our studio also. Sure, right? sure, 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 uh, sure. And we can actually record some shots with you uh, okay. where we take country specific requirements, you know. For example, yeah, okay. and you can actually come and, uh, with a study. Mm -hmm. But for Germany, yeah. You require knowledge of these yeah. three tools, these two languages. It could be 30 yeah. second short, it could be not more than that, you know, like you yeah, do yeah, short, sure. you know. And if we can record maybe 10, 20, 30 such shots, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then they will actually go viral, you know, and yeah, they will sure. uh, they will go, uh, they will circulate a lot even over WhatsApp also. You know, sure, especially sure, sure. Uh, so that we can certainly. I'll do. get that ready. Maybe give me a couple of yeah. weeks' time to collate yes. all the information. Right. And once we are ready, we'll coordinate with your office, and then we'll fix up something. Yeah, yeah. Vikas, I will ask Vikas tomorrow to get in sure, touch sure. with you, and sure, you can sure. actually schedule the things with him. You know. Sure. So sure, that sure. And, uh, uh, we can do actually two, three first to start with how, and then maybe maybe you, you and Vikas can. Uh, decide you know, ideas, because yeah, yeah. Ah, whichever is best because then yeah. you can also circulate at your level and we can also circulate at our level you know yeah yeah, yeah. so venki over to you uh, for concluding remarks uh, today was a very good session so thanks arindam for you know uh, enlightening all of us on this sector that we probably at least i was not uh, familiar at all so thanks for that and i'm sure people who joined the call would have benefited a lot uh, so we look forward to many more such sessions. No, I will actually specific. circulate this link across the country now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and no. we don't need like you know like in them we need to have certain focused topics like this. Maybe you'll get better audience uh, mm. who are interested in that specific sector come and you know listen in and also ask questions. You know there were a lot of questions around EV and you know even plastics which are though not directly related to automotive but you know they are part of the supplier or tier one, tier two kind of a thing. But it really helped to uh, get a holistic view of you know what the sector is all about. So thanks for that. Uh, I don't have anything back to you, Abhay. So uh, thank you, Arindam. Thanks, Atan. It was a really interesting discussion. You know, Akhilesh is there right from the start. You know, mm -hmm. he, he is listening to our discussion. Uh, so thank you, Akhilesh. Uh, uh, more importantly, Venki, thanks a ton. You have been supporting this initiative. Now he is more or less my permanent co-panelist uh, <laughs> with me and actually helps me answer a lot of good questions. So I just have to learn how to answer the AICT question, which I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you learn that, then my job will be you know? so, Venki, you now, if you IT could ka... just put these things on chat GPT, we will figure it out from chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Venki, whenever you are in Delhi, uh, you should uh, meet Arindam. You know? Yeah, a, I'll, uh, I'll uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he gave a very interesting talk when we actually invited him to AICT. So uh, at that time, I really liked the way he actually presented. And that is the reason I said, okay, let's have first session with Arindam itself. So th there also with AI City also, we started with automobile sector. Here also, I started with Arindam. So thanks, Arindam. Thanks a ton no, my for pleasure. joining. My pleasure. Uh, sincerely you, appreciate. And we would like to work more closely with you on sure. uh, AI City related uh, uh, projects and you know that kind of a thing and whenever you have time uh, sure. just 
just let us know and we will be more than happy to have you again here because there are a lot no, of things we, are, we, are, we, we have are. not touched even to two wheeler sector to aaj humne touch bhi nahi kiya you know yeah. uh, so which is the largest lot, segment actually, uh, which is the know. largest sector in this country so okay. and one maybe thing, next way we also want to do this you know there since uh, there was a lot of interest from this colleges in you know south this time you know from right. medical and radios if right. there are you know specific things related to that area geo you know we may want to kind of address that also maybe that's one way to look at it right 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 karte yeah. but, but there were no questions that came up they were just listening in no 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 so i we, think we, many we, students are keen on listening you know yeah you know that's what i realized today when i in the nahi to bag last time till last time we get lot of people used to come and you know talk but today okay. hardly anyone uh, came and spoke actually many people were keen on listening to arindam rather yeah. than you know but anyway maybe maybe a next month or a uh, next quarter we will call arindam yeah. again sure. and uh, we will take this discussion forward my pleasure it will be my pleasure thank you thank, thank you thank you, you arindam so thank you, you arindam and i will thank request you. all my viewers to like share and subscribe please share this link to as many people as possible this this so they can listen to what arindam has said and it i assure you uh, they will be happy to listen so thank you once again thank you venki see you next wednesday sure thank you bye yeah, thank you bye bye bye